Fuck everybody but me, everybody but me, me. Looking like it's all good, but fuck everybody but me, everybody. Good morning, everybody. So, uh, shit, here we are. I think it's Friday. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Friday. Being a tattoo artist and, you know, working on the weekends, I I get lost a lot, guys, honestly. But, yeah, it's Friday. Because tomorrow is my Friday, so today's y'all's Friday. Or the majority of you guys. And, uh... You know, it was actually half ass warm this morning down here in Myrtle Beach. So that's good. We had a heat wave come in. It's like 40 degrees. So compared to what we've been having, that's great. So anyway, uh, man, there's a lot of questions on first uh, subwoofer coil size and then uh, subwoofer size in general. <laughs> that I, I would like to talk about. And, you know, we're, we're just talking about effects here. Uh, I see a lot of people like, what are the difference between a three inch and a four inch coil? Well, uh, the four inch coil is bigger. Yeah. Oh, you want more? Okay, well, in terms of power handling, theoretically, you're gonna get more out of a four inch coil. Now, in my situation, I found that not to be true. Uh, my Pride subs are three inch coil and the DS18 Hooligan are four inch and the Pride subs take power, handle power, run cooler on the same amount of power, actually less power or no, about the same power as the four inch coil. Um, it all comes down to how many windings are on the coil. It's like this, guys. If you take a three-inch coil, and we're going to say it's eight layers uh, flat wound, which means the wire isn't thin, round wire. It's like a little bigger flat wire. It is going to handle more power than a four-inch coil that is four-layer round wound. Don't, don't ask me why. It's just science, you know? It's science. So, uh... That kind of kills the whole theory of a four inch coil being better for power handling, I guess. Uh, because right there, you know, we've done proven that wrong. Um, now, if both of them are eight layer flat wound, the four inch probably would handle more power. Yeah. But don't just let coil size like trip you up because I just showed you a prime example of one being better than the other, and obviously it would be the smaller one. Now, in terms of efficiency, efficiency, yeah, three inches is gonna win. Uh, and, you know, maybe they would be equal <clears throat> on efficiency if you took the three inch coil that's eight layer flat wound and versed it against a four inch coil that's four layer round wound, then in that case, they might be pretty much even on efficiency. But, you know, there's a lot of things that you really have to take into consideration there, like uh, copper versus aluminum coils. Uh, copper coils give you more motor force. Your, your BL and motor force really go up with a copper coil versus the aluminum. <clears throat> uh, they say that the aluminum coils actually cool a little better, but you're sacrificing efficiency. So there's a lot of things that come into play here, guys. Uh, me personally, what do I like? I have only had one set of four inch coils and they were the DS18 hooligans and I was not happy. Uh, you know, they didn't like power, uh, not the power that the prides took. So it really, it didn't impress me at all. Um, I'm a three inch coil guy. I, I just love the efficiency of a three inch coil. And for you, those of you that don't know, efficiency is how much the subwoofer will move on low power. You know, it takes less power to get loud. That is efficiency. And a lot of times you sacrifice that. 
Like these damn <laughs> G2 Genesis. Most efficient subwoofer that I have ever tried. I mean, they have a really high motor force, like crazy motor force. And they are super efficient and they have copper coils. Those are all things right there that I love. But with being super efficient, I'm the loudest I've ever been on music. Like I have never demoed this loud before. They just totally kill the prides for demo. But at the end of the day, I lose a half dB on burps or around a half. But God dang, I mean, these are like less than half the price of the pride. So yeah, it's a give and take. You're louder. I'm way louder on music. I just don't burp as high of a number. Who gives a fuck about a number, really? I mean, the only reason I even do numbers is for testing and uh, just to prove to people that this old Jeep would throw up a number, you know? I don't give a fuck about that number. I mean, I do in the fact of, am I getting louder, you know, is it a stronger demo? I do in that aspect, but I ain't going out here every weekend and paying hundreds of dollars just to run through the lane and put up a number so a bunch of people can see it. When I can have my wife hold the damn camera and my buddy Billy run the term lab and we can film everything. It's term lab. I mean, it still counts. Anyway, guys, now we're going to jump into subwoofer size. And if you follow my channel, you're fucking awesome. But if you follow my channel, mo most of you probably don't. Uh, but still, you know, I had a dilemma here a while back of the old, uh, should I do a bunch of 12s in here? Or should I do 615s? And, you know, I decided on the 615s for cost effectiveness, easier fitment, uh, if I blow a sub in the back, I don't have to take eight out to get to it. You know, there, there's a lot of things there that really made the 15s beneficial. But another reason is why did I choose 15s? Most subwoofer companies, not all, but most, they use the same exact motor on a 12, a 15, and an 18. Now, when you break it down, 12 has less cone area than a 15. 15 has less than an 18. 90% of the times when they design the sub, they they really focus on the 15, and then they just use the same motor for tw the 12 and the 18. And, you know, it takes... A lot more subs, I guess. <clears throat> How it breaks down is 12 golden, but you got less cone area than 15. 15 golden, but a lot of times the motor is a little, a little on the weak side for the 18s moving mass, you know, which is the weight of the cone, the coil, the spiders, etc. And at the end of the day, in most scenarios, for efficiency and power to move the mass, etc., the 15 wins. Uh, and, you know, this is something that I've discussed with a whole lot of people. It, it ain't just my theory. I've discussed it with a lot of people, and, and it winds up being true, you know. And we've talked about the whole moving mass and motor force before. And it's like the SCAR EVL. The 12 would do great, you know. The 10 would do great. The 15, getting really iffy there. And then the 18, you know, with that really, it's tiny motor on the EVL. I mean, hell, it's, I think it's about the same size as a McDouble. Uh, if you add pickles to that McDouble, extra pickle, it's probably a little bigger, you know. But uh, it, the EVL, it just, it don't have enough motor force really to move the cone air, the cone weight and coil and everything of a 15, let alone an 18. And it ain't that bad with other brands and other subs, you know, like a ZV618, you know, that's going to be designed to move all that weight. But you still get the same size motor on the 15 and the 12. That's why a lot of builds with 12s are really nasty because the motor force is definitely powerful enough to move all that weight. 
and then you got the same motor motor moving all that weight on a 15 and then you get the same motor on an 18 so for motor force versus moving the mass that it has to move and the cone area a lot of times the 15 is going to come out winning and it's that way with the majority of the brands of subwoofers. They use same motor for 12, 15, and 18. So take that for what it's worth, guys. And really, you know, take all that into consideration when you're planning out your build. And at the end of the day, for me, you know, it, it was going to take two 12s to give me a little more motor force, or not motor force, a little more cone area than a 15. But we had had a lot of motor force, which is important. But still, 212s to get a little bit more cone area than 115. So at the end of the day, 1212s versus 615s, you got to break it down into the narrow. And as I said, most companies, what you pay for a 12, it's only like $50 more to get a 15. So the money that I'm saving doing that is astronomical. I mean, that's a lot of money. We all know Jerry like money. Uh, I like to save money. To my wife, a penny pincher. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much what I got today. I know a lot of people are like, you know, what's better? Three, three inch coil, four inch coil. A lot of times it comes down to preference guys. Uh, cause I've seen a lot of companies have four inch coil subs and they're not impressive. And, uh, Def Bunch is a brand that everybody loves. You know, they make a three and a half inch coil. I have, don't have hardly any any feedback on it, or I don't have no experience with it. <laughs> but one thing I will tell you is their 45 series, which is a four a four and a half inch coil. That's a big ass coil, guys. And from what I've been reading in groups, they're not an efficient sub at all. I mean, yeah, they're rating this sub as, you know, they give it a super high power handling. Well, yeah, you got a fucking four and a half inch coil in it. Of course, it's going to have a great power handling. You know, but what everybody's saying is it's not efficient, dude. You know, it takes like a shit ton of power to get it loud. I don't like that. I, I don't, you know. I don't want to put, I, I'd change my 15s in here out, you know, put four 1545s or 4550, 45 15s is what they would be. You know, just do a simple sub swap. And with the power that I have in here, you know, I would probably lose two to three dB because they're not as efficient as what I have in here now. And on music, they would probably suck for me. And. Yeah, I could probably get a louder SPL score than I've ever done, you know, if I put a 15K on each sub, which is essentially double on the power I have. Yeah, they'll handle that power, but they need that power. That is something that y'all need to take into consideration when you're picking subwoofers. You know, that's why you don't see... Sun, Sundown doesn't offer a lot in the 4-inch coil category. The majority of their shit is 3-inch coil. And they're doing that for a reason. They they still want you to be able to get plenty loud throwing an 8K per woofer, you know. They want to give you just a good enough coil to handle an 8K per woofer. But they're also making it to where you can get loud as fuck if you only put a 5K per woofer. So, that's today's video. I hope somebody learned something. And don't, don't take a lot of my advice. I had no fucking clue what I'm talking about half time. Sounds good though, right? <laughs> But anyway, guys, I hope y'all have a great weekend, man. Peace out, guys, and as always, base on.